Hello, multivariable calculus students. This is Mr. Johnson, and we're on section 10.4, which is motion in space. So we're going to talk about um, the position and the velocity and the acceleration. And much of this is um, intuitive, and we've also talked a little bit about this stuff up to this point. But we're just going to go through these three different um, aspects of motion in space. For the opener, we're going to look at just a quick review problem on changing the function, uh, the vector function in terms of t to be in terms of the arc length. I'm not going to find um, the other two questions here. Uh, where are you now? And what is the curvature? We're just going to do the change of parameters and change the function from t to arc length. So our first step is that we have our vector function, which is 3 sine of t 4t and then 3 cosine t. And our first step is that we're going to find the derivative of this, which is 3 cosine t 4 and then negative 3 sine t. And then what we need is the magnitude of this. So the magnitude of r prime of t is the square root of 9 cosine squared t plus 16 plus 9 sine squared t. And I'll, I'll write this out just so that you can see the change here. So we do have the 16, but then I'm going to factor a 9 out of my trig functions so that we get cosine squared plus sine squared, which we know is equal to 1. And so we have 16 plus 9, and we're taking the square root of that, which is the square root of 25, which is going to be 5. So that's our magnitude. So then the next step is that we're going to take and look at the arc length with respect to t, which is the integral from, in this case, 0. Um, and let's go back there really quick. So we're looking at this point, 0, 0, 3. And so if I compare it with the x, y, and z values in the, give, in the given problem, I can see that t is equal to 0, which satisfies that point. So I'm going to start at t is 0, and I'm going to go up to some value t. And we have 5, which is the magnitude of r prime. And we're going to use du as a placeholder here. And that gives us the antiderivative evaluated from 0 to t, which just gives us um, 5t. So in other words, we have s equal to 5t. And if we want to make this a function of arc length, we just simply divide by 5. So we have s divided by 5. And that's going to be how we're going to change our parameter. So instead of having r of t, we're going to have r of uh, t of s. And I will take and put s divided by 5 in this function up here for all the t values that I'm highlighting in green. So I have 3 sine of s over, square, uh, s over 5, and then 4 times s over 5, and 3 times cosine of s over 5. So what we've done is we've changed the way that we look at our particular parameter. And now the parameter is based on arc length. So let, let's actually, let's tackle the very first question here. And that says, where are you now if you move along the curve 10 units? So if we were to move along the curve for 10 units, we're going to go ahead and substitute in 10 here. And we get 3 sine of 10 divided by 5, so 2 and 4 times 10 divided by 5, which is going to be 8, and 3 times cosine of 10 divided by 5, which is 2. And so this would, this would give us the position. And as an ordered pair, obviously, we're looking at just these values. But that vector is going to tell us exactly where we end up tracing out to to get to that point. So that's where we are now. I'm not going to take the time to do the curvature right now. Um, just because we're going to move on to our new topics in 10.4. Keep in mind that in the answers at the end of this section, there is an error on this opener. So the, the uh, opener is a slightly different question on the answers there, which will be fixed at a later time. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our new topics today. So we're looking at, um, like I said, position, velocity, and acceleration. So what we're talking about is taking the space curves that we're discussing. Basically, we're not changing anything with related to graphing them, we're just changing how we're defining them. So r of t is the position, and r prime of t will be our velocity, and r double prime of t will be our acceleration. 
really similar to what you've studied in the past related to particle motion. Now the first part here uh, in terms of our graph that we're going to talk about is just the average velocity versus the instantaneous velocity, the velocity vector. And if you were to take a look at a particular space curve, and if you were to look at the average rate of change between two points, and you calculate that, that's going to be your average velocity. So it's the rate of change over two different points along that curve, or two different times if we're talking about particle motion. And if we were to look at that relationship of that average rate of change and let h go to zero, what we end up getting is a singular point along the space curve, which gives us the definition of the limit definition of the derivative and therefore gives us the instantaneous velocity at any given point. And again, that's directly associated with everything we've done in the past related to derivatives and the limit definition of a derivative. Now, the speed is exactly what we've studied in the past. It's the absolute value of the velocity, which remember the velocity is r prime of t. So we have speed equal to the magnitude of that. Um, now, again, this is the same thing as ds dt based on what we've been studying in the past, and that's the rate of change of the distance with respect to the time. And then the acceleration vector is going to be the derivative of the velocity vector, which is the second derivative of the position vector. Again, the same relationship that we've seen in the past. Let's move on to the next page and try example one. So with example one, we're going to find the acceleration given position. So it says the position vector of an object moving in a plane is given by r of t. Find its velocity, speed, and acceleration when time is one. And then we're going to illustrate it geometrically. So our first step is to take a look at the derivative of r. And that is, again, the velocity. And that's equal to 3t squared and then 2t for components. And let's go ahead and take a look at that at time one, because that's what we're studying in terms of the value. We have 3 and 2 for our components. And then we're going to look at r double prime. And remember, that's going to be acceleration. And acceleration is simply 6t and 2. So if we're looking at the acceleration at 1, we get 6, 2 for our components. We also want the speed. And remember, the speed is the absolute value or the magnitude of velocity at 1. So our speed is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is equal to the square root of 13. All right, we're going to try to graph this. And I do have a graph that I pulled from Desmos, but I just want to remind you that in our particular position function, we have x equal to t cubed, and we have y equal to t squared. And so if we're trying to get a better sense of where of how this looks on a plane, we could change this first equation to be t equals x to the one-third power. And we could do a substitution here and eliminate the parameter. And we get y equals x to the two-thirds. This may not be a graph that you're familiar with, but this particular graph kind of looks like when you know you were a kid, or maybe even now, I suppose, when you try to draw a bird, a simple bird um, in a picture or something like that, it looks kind of like that. That's what this graph looks like. It looks like this kind of square root function on either side of um, the origin where we're looking at the symmetry of the y-axis. And so what I did was I just grabbed this in Desmos so it's nice and neat, and I just graphed it from 0 to 7 um, and, and, and put a scale in there so that it's easier for us to... Um, put in our velocity and acceleration vectors. So we're looking specifically at the point 1, 1, because remember, if we were to substitute t is equal to 1, we get that particular position vector of 1, 1, um, and that leads us out to this point. Now, the velocity vector is, I'm just going to write it up here. So the, the velocity at time 1 is 3, 2. And so if we were to trace this one out, and actually I'll use green so we can see a little bit better, we're going to move three units to the right, and then we're going to move two units up. And so our velocity vector looks like this. Remember, the velocity vector is directly connected to r prime. It, it is the same uh, the same calculation as r prime. We're just calling the velocity vector now. So this is the tangent vector to the curve. It should look like the tangent vector. 
Now we're going to take a look at the acceleration. Remember the acceleration vector at 1 is 6, 2. And so we'll do the same thing here. We'll move out 6 units to out, all the way out here to 7. Then we'll move up 2 units. And so the acceleration vector looks about like that. And so on our graph, we can just better um, better take a look at these these two different vectors and see how they interact as the particle moves through space. Okay, let's go ahead and try example two. The picture is already drawn for us. In this one, we're going to find the velocity and acceleration and the speed. So really similar, except this time it's not at a specific uh, point. And so we're going to find the derivative of r first, the velocity. And that gives us 2t e to the t. And then if we use the product rule, we get e to the t plus t e to the t. So there's our velocity in general. And then we have the speed. So we're going to do the magnitude of this velocity vector, which is the square root of 4t squared plus e to the 2t. And then we're going to take e to the t plus t e to the t, and we're going to square it. And so what that gives us is e to the 2t plus 2t to the sorry, 2t e to the 2t plus t squared e to the 2t. So we're, again, we're expanding this element squared, and that's how we end up getting those terms down there. We could uh, simplify this a little bit and get the square root of 4t squared plus 2e to the 2t plus 2t e to the 2t plus t squared e to the 2t. So that's about as far as we could uh, simplify that down, but that's going to be the speed. Okay, then what we're going to do is find the acceleration vector. So we're taking the derivative again of velocity. And here we have e to the t, but then we have the product rule again. So e to the t plus t e to the t. And we could simplify this if we'd like to by combining just a little bit at the end of that last component. So we have 2e to the t plus t e to the t. And that's going to be our acceleration. OK, let's try example three. So example three, we want to describe the curve defined by r of t. And if the curve represents a moving object, we want to find the speed. So this is one of the vectors that we've talked about a handful of times. This, is, this vector is a helix. And in this particular case, this helix is centered on the z-axis because z is equal to t. And we're going to revolve in a circular motion around the z-axis as z increases. Um, and, and again, if you, you know, if you want to think about what this looks like, here's z, x, and y. Um, you know, the, the motion based on x and y is circular, but as z increases, we have a circular motion that kind of, it's like a slinky that moves up along the z-axis like that. So that's the helix that we're, that we're dealing with. Okay, we want to find the speed. Now, if you remember, when we take the derivative of r of t, I mentioned this before that this is going to be a constant value no matter where we are on the particular curve. And if we take this magnitude, um, I mentioned that you could memorize this. This is the square root of 2, and it doesn't matter where you are on the curve with relation to t, it's a constant speed along the helix, which is one of the unique characteristics of a helix graph. Okay, let's move on to the next page in example four. All right, we're going to talk about doing the antiderivatives now and going from, for instance, velocity or acceleration backwards to either uh, velocity or position. And this is really similar in terms of the idea behind it um, that you've seen in the past in single variable calculus. So we have an object that moves, uh, a moving particle that starts in an initial position of r of 0, initial velocity of v of 0, and then we have the, the acceleration equation, and we're trying to go backwards and figure out what velocity and the position is. So we're going to start with integrating the acceleration. And if we do that, we get the vector 2t squared, comma 3t squared, and t. However, if you remember, there is a constant uh, vector that 
may exist. And this is equal to the velocity at a value t. So let's go ahead and figure out based on the, the initial velocity at zero equaling one, negative one, and one, we gotta figure out what c is gonna be. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, because we're being told to, to substitute t as zero, so I'm gonna take and plug in t as zero here for this vector. And of course we get zero, zero, and zero. And then we have the plus c. Now it's a little misleading. You know, when we plug in zero for t, we end up getting zero, zero, zero. If we were to get, for instance, zero, one, zero, then c would have to be a vector such that when we add those, we get one, negative one, one. Now in this case, because this vector is zero, 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 c is simply one, negative one, one, okay? Uh, therefore, our velocity vector, so we have v of t is equal to, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this vector and I'm gonna add it to c, and remember c is down here. So I'm gonna combine these two vectors algebraically. So I get two t squared plus one, three t squared minus one, and t plus one. So there's our first step. We have the velocity vector. Now our second step is that we're gonna find the position vector. So we're gonna integrate the velocity vector we just found. And we get as an antiderivative, two thirds t cubed plus t, and t cubed minus t, and one half t squared plus t. And of course we have a possible constant vector. All right, now we're gonna use our initial condition so we know that r of zero is equal to one, zero, zero. And similar to the last problem, I'm gonna take t as zero and substitute it into this equation. Now again, we get zero, zero, zero. That doesn't always occur. That's occurred in both cases in this particular problem because we have these polynomials we're dealing with. But if this is something other than zero, 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 that's gonna impact what c is. In this case, c is simply one, zero, zero. Okay, to finish the problem now, what we'll do is write our final vector, r of t, and we're gonna take the portion that we figured out here in green, and then we'll just add c, which is one, zero, zero. So we have r of t, which is equal to two thirds t cubed plus t uh, plus one. And again, that comes from the one and the c here. And then we have t cubed minus t and one half t squared plus t. So that's our vector r of t, our position vector. Okay, in the next video, we will talk about the tangent and normal components of acceleration. Thank you.